today is I'm going to show you how to place a backing on your paintings. It's a black foam core that has been screwed onto the back of the canvas stretchers. Uh, and it protects the painting from anybody poking it from the back or leaning it up against a sharp corner. Uh, it's, it's worth taking the time to do. So I am going to do this from scratch on a different painting. Also on the back of mine, I print out a label and then I cover that label with um, contact paper because the label has a tendency to just peel off. So I find that if I use clear contact paper and go over the edges of the label by half to three quarters of an inch, that keeps it stuck to the back much more effectively. Now that I'm ready to put a backing on, uh, I clean up those edges with black, probably alkyd. But I take more of my black gesso and I very carefully paint the back. I try not to get any of that black gesso onto my canvas. I did a little bit here, but not much. And if I skip this, I find the backing doesn't look very good. So I think it's important for me because I'm gonna use uh, a black foam core that I go ahead and make this black as well. It just makes it look a whole lot better as a finished um, result. But there's no reason that you have to use black foam core. You could use a white foam core. It doesn't matter. Black foam core is a little more expensive. I, I just think it looks better. Um, and like I said, most of the reason that I do it is because the sides of my painting uh, are black. But as far as protecting your canvas, doesn't matter whether it's black or white. What you need to do this is um, a hammer. It doesn't have to be this big. I'd say use a small hammer. An awl for punching holes, which you'll see me. And you want the correct size of screwdriver. I happen to be using Phillips head screws, and so these are Phillips screwdrivers. Uh, you want something that's the right size so that it will uh, screw in much more easily. You need screw collars, and you really need this because you don't want the screws going right through the foam core, then the foam core will pop off. It's so it, you really have to have these collars in order to keep the screw from sinking in. Uh, it will hold the screw head on top of the foam core uh, while still giving you the support. I use a marking pencil that is white chalk. You could use a white uh, pastel pencil, you could use a, a white nail pencil, you know those things where you put the white under your fingernails, it doesn't really matter. You can use anything that you're able to see make a mark on your foam core. So I don't know why you couldn't use any color of colored pencil, uh, perhaps even graphite, I don't know, you'd have to try it. You've got to have a good matte knife and it's very important that this be sharp. So I like getting the knives where you can break off the, the blade as you go so that you get a, a new and pristine blade uh, as you need it. But if you ever use one of these things dull, they're 10 times more dangerous when they're dull than they are when they're sharp. And they're dangerous enough when they're sharp. So you've got to, don't do this when you've got any distractions, pay attention to what you're doing, keep your free hand away from the cutting edge, just be very, very careful. I'm also going to use something called strap hangers. Um, they're generally used to hang heavier objects like mirrors or a heavy picture, uh, but they're much better to use on the back of a canvas than those little screw eye things because it will hang flush, the, the wire will be flush with the back of your painting. I'm using the smallest one uh, that you can get which only has one hole in it for one screw. But these things have one, two, three, or even four uh, holes in the strap. So the more large and heavy the painting is, the bigger the strap hanger that you'd want to use, just because you'd get more screws and therefore more uh, load bearing on it. And I'm using fairly small screws. These are just regular wood screws for a Phillips head. Uh, the reason that I'm using such small screws, this is maybe half an inch, 
Um, the reason I'm using such small screws is because my stretchers on this painting are only the three quarter inch stretchers. You know, if it was a heavier, one of those deeper stretchers, you could use a, a longer screw. Also, uh, the wire that I will put on the back of this thing, this one happens to be from Larson Jewel. Uh, I think you could probably just Google hanging wire uh, and go to some place that will sell you a large spool of wire. Um, I think I paid $40 for this, but that's been a few years ago. This will last you for years and years, for a very long time, depending on how large the paintings are that you make. But I like this because it is plastic coated. The old braided wires, uh, I don't know if you've ever been stabbed by one of those. They're awful. It'll stab through your skin. They really hurt. Um, and you've got a piece of scary metal sticking into your skin. So this plastic coated stuff is wonderful. Uh, but you'll see at the very end when I put the hanging wire on, I will also use black electrical tape to, it, you know, it'll go through the strap hanger and be wrapped around itself. But I think that finishing touch of the electrical tape is very important because over a period of years, sometimes the wire gets a little unwound in the back and the electrical tape will, will prevent that from happening. Okay, I'm gonna be working on a cutting mat that's actually designed for sewing. So you're gonna to have to find some sort of surface that you can cut on, whatever that is. If you don't have a cutting mat, and you try to do this right on a table, you're going to damage the table because the fact that you're cutting through the foam core means that your razor is going to make contact with whatever it is you're working on. This is a piece of uh, quarter inch black foam core and I just learned that apparently there is uh, an acid free version of this stuff but I'm thinking that because this is only going to make contact with the back of my painting, I'm not going to spend the money on it that's, you know, you might choose to do that, that's up to you. Now, you can take a T-square, a ruler, whatever, and you can measure this out. What I generally do is I just go about half an inch off of one side, about half an inch off of the other. I hope that I'm reasonably close, because I'm trying to be about a quarter inch in on all sides. So if I overhang by half an inch on each of the two dimensions, by the time you split that, you're about a quarter inch uh, inside each area. So you can be as methodical as you want. I'm using my white chalk sewing marker to mark the square that I'm going to use. So now I see exactly what I want to use. So I'm going to use a metal T-square. You don't have to. You can see how I got a little skewed. So I'm going to remark that. Your first cut, I want to make sure that I've got maybe a half inch of the blade out. Your first cut, if you push straight down and punch through, you're likely to get a cleaner looking corner. I'm not getting just a perfect cut on here. I, I don't really sweat it too much. This is the part, there are several parts of this where you really want to pay attention to what you're doing. Notice my hands are back from the edge of that uh, T-square, that metal edge, so I don't cut myself. Take your time, go slowly, use a good sharp blade, and you'll feel when you've really gone through. It might take two or three passes. Ah. to get all the way through your board. So here's my cut piece. Now what I want to do is I want to cut each of the four corners off. There are a couple of ways you could, you could vent the back. Uh, it doesn't have to be a removed corner, but that's probably the easiest one to demonstrate. So what I will do is just guesstimate. I want to make enough of a corner here so that I clear the stretcher bars and I have a, an open space on the back of the piece. So what I do is I mark and cut one triangle. Don't move your, your, your 
T-square until you're sure you've gotten through. Now I have this triangle, I can use it to mark the other cuts that I want to make. So I'll cut those other three corners off. Place it face down on my cutting board. And I'm just going to check. And I'm checking to make sure that I've got at least a quarter inch clearance from this to the edge. I would not bring this right up to the edge because it's going to show when it's hanging on the wall. If you're back by a good quarter inch, you could even go a little further than a quarter inch, it's not going to show when it's hanging up. Now when I'm making the marks with my white pencil, it does show. What you can do is flip the board over and use the cleaner backside if you want to do that. Now I need to figure out where my hanging strap hangers are going to go. And what you want to do is you want to, the strap hangers need to go about a third of the way down on the back of the canvas. So my canvas, the height of my canvas is 16 inches. So let's see what's about a third of that. Anybody? Five inches? Five and a third, but let's just say we're going to go down by five inches. Now you want to make sure that you're going, you're going from the top, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've done this where I flipped it over and sure enough, my hanging wire is upside down. So this is the top of my canvas. I want to measure down five inches. You could go five and a half. So I'm going to go five and a half inches just to be a little more safe. So my strap hangers, and there is a front and a back to a strap hanger. If you look carefully at it, there is a, a bulging side and there's a very flat side. So you want the flat side to go against the wooden uh, stretcher. And I'm placing it so that the opening of my strap hanger is pretty much lined up with the white mark from my marker pencil, rather than having the bottom of the strap hanger at that mark because I want the wire to be pretty well coming right out of that, out of that area. So um, what I'm going to do now before I do anything else is I'll go ahead and put these in. Uh, this is where you're going to use an awl, A-W-L. It is a pointed object, which means you can put a hole in your canvas if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So you want to take the awl, put it inside the opening of that hole, and you want to whack it gently with your hammer. So a couple of taps of the hammer, you're, you know, don't get crazy and go all the way through the wood. Just sink a little opening into that wood that's deep enough that your, your screw will sort of hold itself in there. These screws, as I mentioned before, are not very long screws. And it's a real quick job to sink this one screw. Now what you'll find is a strap hanger that has just one hole in it, the strap hanger itself can rotate on that hole. So unless you sink that screw nice and snugly into that wood, it can pull. But don't get crazy and go through the wood. And also, when you're putting the awl into that hole, really pay attention. You don't want to get too close to either edge. Try to get it more or less in the center of your, of your uh, stretcher. If you had a bigger stretcher, you'd be using larger strap hangers and they'd have two holes on the metal strap part um, so that they couldn't rotate. You know, those two screws would hold it perfectly aligned. You could even tilt these in if you wanted to, but there's no real reason to do that. So now we have our strap hangers on here. Let's put, well, we have to make two more cuts here. And the two cuts we have to make are to allow room for these strap hangers to come up. So I'm going to cut uh, slightly around where the strap hangers are. And I'm just going to mark with my white pencil. Once again, it's up to you how methodical you want to be. I have done these things where 
instead of putting the vents here, I'll make a big rectangular opening and there's a little bit of a vent here and a little bit of a vent there so that this can be completely closed in if you want. You could, that way you still get ventilation. And I need to come in by, let's say, this much. I'm looking at the edge of the stretcher and trying to figure out how I could clear that. Okay, now I want to make sure that my two areas for my two rectangular openings that are going to allow my strap hangers room to exist are level. So I'm just going to use my T-square. I'm coming in about an inch and a quarter. And, you know, you'll notice I'm not being overly picky here. I'm just trying to get it to look pretty much acceptable. Now, I'm going to make these cuts just freehand with the mat knife. I'm not going to use a metal guide. So, and you can if you want to, but personally I think that's... I think it's easier to just cut it freehand. So once again, you want to stay aware of where your hands are in relation to this very sharp blade. So the first cut I make is that corner. I punch down and I carefully drag that blade out of the edge. Be very careful. Go through it a couple of times particularly at that very inside corner. You want to make sure you've gone all the way through. I changed my blade, I snapped off the old blade so that I could, and I can tell a huge difference in how it's cutting. Just be very careful when you're doing this. So, once again, check and make sure that up is up. Check and make sure that your strap hangers, I'm telling you, it, you, you will at some point put your strap hangers on upside down because everybody does. So I just want to make sure, I cut it a little close on the triangles, just want to make sure that my hardware has room to exist. And yeah, it looks good. Now I'm going to start to screw the foam core down. I try to get it centered, you know, pretty much equally from top to bottom. Get it exactly where I want it to be, and then I'm going to place my first screw. Now, you're going to be using an awl to go through this foam pour, and you want to make sure that you're not accidentally putting that awl too far in, which would just go right through the foam core and possibly put a hole right in your canvas. So pay attention to what you're doing. So what I do is I like to use my pinky to just sort of stabilize my hand. I want to come in far enough from the edge that the screw is not going to be set, uh, right on the edge of the foam core. And I'm now going to use a screw collar first. This is very important. It doesn't seem like it would be, but this is what keeps your screw from going right through the foam core. Um, I've seen people take these backs off for a frame and then put them back on and they forget the screw collars and the screw goes right through the foam core. Uh, don't do that. Now I'm using a screw that where the first quarter inch doesn't have threads, it's blank. And so it's perfectly made for just this sort of thing. And you'll see this is a, a, a bigger screw than what I used on the strap hangers because it's going to sit up above the surface. So you figure the first quarter inch of it is going to be sunk into the foam core rather than the wood. It is a wooden, a wood screw. Now you want to snug it. Just make it good and snug. Don't keep sinking until you get to China. And you could. If you go too far with this, it'll make a divot in the back of the foam core, 
which will look like you don't know when to stop. Once again, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm staying in by more than a quarter inch, a couple of fairly light smacks on that awl. Again, don't forget the screw collar. Now on a big painting, it's probably a good idea to place a screw every, let's say, eight inches, maybe every 10 inches. Um, in other words, don't just do it in the corners. Make sure that there's not a large expanse of foam core that has not been secured to the back of your painting. Over here, these are very important to screw these little areas in because they'll catch on stuff and they'll pull out. So you want to make sure that you put a screw on either side of this area that you have cut out for your strap hangers. This is such a small painting that I can just place a screw at every existing corner and that will be fine. I don't need to have to worry about going in between. But like I said, on a bigger painting, you'd want to do you know, every maybe 8 inches, maybe every 10 inches. What you could do, what I've been known to do, because at this point I have enough screws in my surface that I don't have to worry that this thing's going to slip. Mm -hmm. You know, be real careful with your first two screws because it could slide one way or the other. So once you get two screws in, you don't have to worry that it's going to rotate on you. What you could do is just go around with the awl and punch a hole everywhere that you know you're going to have to sink a screw. Now, the reason that I leave these vent holes is I've been told that it's important on the back of a painting. Uh, sometimes you get things framed at the framer and they'll put something called a dust cover on the back. And I've been told that that's bad for canvases. I don't know why. I've just been told that you need ventilation on the back. Uh, so you can either, as I said before, you can either cut these triangles out or what you could do is make these cuts deeper so that you've got a little bit of ventilation going on. I also think it's important that you understand when you're, when you have your canvas face down on a surface that you have made sure that there isn't anything sharp or anything that might scratch the surface of your painting. So I've been careful to keep sort of wiping back so that there's nothing on there as I'm flipping this painting around that could be scratching the surface of my painting. Now I'm going to um, put the hanging wire on here. I'm using plastic coated wire that I talked about before. This one happens to be from Morrison Jewel. Uh, I'm guesstimating how much of the length I need using my wire cutters and just snapping through a length of this stuff. Now. Whenever you place a wire on the back of a painting, it should be about a third of the way down uh, in order to make sure that by the time you hang it on the wall, it's not going to show above. You don't want to get super tight back here. That's the temptation, is to tighten this, overly tighten this wire so that there's no space between the wire and the wall. Don't do that. You just, you want it to be a little bit loose just a little bit, not radically. If it's radically loose, then your, then your wire is going to pop out at you. So I've taken the wire, I've gone around it, this little strap hanger once, and you can go around two or three times if you want. It, on a small painting, I go around once, and I twist the wire. Now, this one is important. It's important that I, like I said, don't get too crazy tight. You want some pull, some pull, so that your hand can get behind there and hang it on the wall. And what you might want to do is just this sort of thing to make sure that you haven't gotten it, once again, way too loose. Plastic coated wire is worth the money because that's what's keeping me from getting those little tiny puncture wounds in my, in my hand. All right, I'm just going to take electrical tape. 
the, uh, what I have found is if you use masking tape or, you know, heaven forbid, scotch tape or something, it just dries out and it's not good. But electrical tape, I believe, just ages better. Also, I can get it in black and snip off a length of it. And what I'm going to do, and this is just something I started doing. I don't think that this is some big official thing. But I find that if I wrap fairly tightly that last inch of the wire, then I'm not worried uh, that over a period of years that this is going to unwrap itself. So <laughs> this is the back of my painting. Uh, it, it's so much safer to have this sort of thing on the back uh, because it keeps people from wanting to stick their fingers in there to pick up the painting mostly. I kept the wire loose enough so that when I'm placing it on the wall, I can slide my hand back there. I always use two hooks, never one. Uh, if you use two hooks that are about, what you do is you take the width of your painting, and on this one it's 16 inches, you take half of that length, and that's how far apart you want your hooks to be. So this painting is 16 inches wide. I would set two hooks that are 8 inches apart, and that gives me enough distance between the hooks that the painting won't walk, rock on the wall. So the next thing I will do is varnish the painting. You know, like I said, normally I'd be doing this maybe halfway through the painting. So I'll varnish the painting, and I'll also put the varnish around the edges here. That'll help it from marking the wall as much. Uh, and I also will have uh, a printed tag that will be on the back that gives all of the information except for the price. Thank you for watching.